after back to back finals overtime games for the first time in 45 years it's all even at one apiece as we arrive here in Cleveland game two was an ugly grind unless you happen to be a Clevelander LeBron James recorded his fifth career finals triple double which included 39 points the Cavs shot under 33 percent that's a finals low for a road winner but survived a late rally and overtime in Oakland to tie things up. Steph Curry set a finals record for missed three pointers in game two. He was just two of 15 from outside the line on his way to his worst ever playoff shooting night. Five of 23 from the field all told. But Clay Thompson did some splashing instead, tying his playoff career high with 34 points and essentially keeping Golden State in the game most of the night. As always, we have reports on both teams and we'll start with David Aldridge on the dunks. Matt, thanks very much. In game two of the final, Stephen Curry was just five of 23 from the floor. And in the first two games of this series, he's just four of 21 from three point range. But the league's most valuable player and his coach are not quite yet ready to anoint Matthew Della Vadova as a Curry stopper. We've seen great defenses all year. We just got to you know, execute better, um, obviously make shots. And I think we just got to be more decisive and more uh, aggressive and assertive with our offensive game. We'll, we'll, we'll be all right. Steph Curry's in a slump. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing game one? I can't remember. I just, you had a bad game. You had one bad shooting there. Um, that's, that's what happens in basketball. Um, it's happened to every player ever to put a uniform on. So, Steph's not in a slump. He just had a tough night. Now, you know, Michael Jordan in his day was known to make up things about his opponents in order to motivate himself to great performances. So I asked Curry if he would make things up about Della Vadova to get ready for game three tonight. And he said, all I have to do is look at the score sheet of game two. That's all the motivation I need. Now with the Cavalier story, let's go over to Rachel Nichols. Thanks, David. Of course, the Cavs player who will have the most impact is still LeBron James. In the series' first two games, he played a total of 96 out of 106 possible minutes. And the Cavaliers are only going to continue to need a tremendous amount from him, which in turn is getting more tricky physically as we're now in a stretch of games every other night. And remember, LeBron's been nursing a sore back throughout these playoffs. All in all, he told us that's meant pretty much round the clock treatment since game two ended on Sunday night. I mean, you're able to space things out when you have a couple of days in between games uh, as far as my treatment regimen, my, my workout regimen, when you only have a day, you know, for the most part or, you know, 36 hours, you got to got to cram everything in there and um, yeah, hopefully the body reacts uh, accordingly to it. They have more time in their home than we have. They gave us every other day back home. They give those guys two and a half days of rest when they go back home. Um, but that's the schedule and it is what it is. LeBron with a not so subtle shot at the scheduling there. Of course, the actual time in between games, the travel, it's the same for both teams. But LeBron's point is that both the two day off stretches in this series are at Golden State, where the Warriors do have all the creature comforts of home. Now, the Cavaliers did try to grab a little extra time here in Cleveland by flying right after game two, but that means they didn't end up landing here until 6 a.m. yesterday. Then by noon, they were back at the practice facilities, so Matt, not a lot of sleep. We'll have to see how all the players, especially LeBron with that heavy load, how they handle it. 